Hello everyone, Daniel's here. Let's continue where we left off last time. Let's copy web9 and paste it under the web10 name. Now when it's web10, let's continue working. Actually before, let's right click on it, click on properties, search for web, web project settings. I have it already open and change the deployment URL to web10. Okay, okay. Now we can continue. And in particular, here's our add passenger controller. Remember that what we've done is that when the user submits the form, it goes to the do post method. If there are no errors available, then we can scroll down. And if there are no errors, then the passenger list is being added, the passenger object with the information that was submitted from the form. And then we redirect to the main page servlet, which says that the passenger has been added to the list. So we add a passenger, it gets added to the passenger list and we are redirecting, we are redirecting. The problem here is that even though the passenger object here, P, well, has the correct information because we set the information from the form and we even validated the form. So we made sure that the fields were not left empty and so on. <laughs> so we got all, the, so it, it looks like everything is okay, but the problem is that the passenger list array is a local variable. So once the request is now redirecting to a new URL, request is being redirected to the main page servlet, what happens is that this P list is no longer available because it was a local variable and now and when the redirection happens to the main page servlet, this the local variable in add passenger, this P list local variable will be gone. So in this tutorial, we will see how to save it permanently with the application. <laughs> so let's see how we can do that. So let's do it in steps. So here I am generating. Okay. And now let, let, let me say, let me start it again. Let's say first thing we want to do is we want to pick up the servlet context. So this, this is, this refers to our servlet here, to, to the, our servlet instance. And our servlet instance has a method get servlet context. There we go. Let's import the package. Now the servlet context object gives us access to our application context. This context lives as long as our application is deployed. And on this context, we can save attribute attributes that will remain as long as our application is deployed. Okay, so let's say we have this context. And then here we do server context set attribute. Let's call it passengers. This is our attribute. <laughs> and save pillars. Remember previously we also set attributes, but not on the server context, but on the request. The request attributes are only going to remain for the duration of one request. So if the user clicks on a link or submits a form, then the request attributes are going to be available until the page is rendered. And when the page is rendered, well, the next user interaction will already be a new request and the previous request attributes will no longer be available. Servlet context is actually available. Let's import the package. Oh, I think. No, okay. 
no the package but okay so uh, let me ju just say server context will be available this object for as long as our application is deployed <laughs> the only for as long as the application is deployed the attributes will remain and we'll be able to get them so if we will save the passenger list on the as an attribute on the server context this will be available for us for as long as the server context lives or for as long as the application is deployed <laughs> now let's see what he wants here um Let's uh, serve the context and attribute passengers p list. Uh, okay, so I, did I? Oh, okay. I'm sorry, sorry. I just my, I, I I didn't see. I'm just misspelled it. From okay, <laughs> there we go. Now, what is the problem here? So, this seems okay, but... And this will work, but... The problem is that each time we add a new user, we override the existing lists. So, if we already had a previous user, and then we submit the form again, then the list will include only the new user. How can we avoid this problem? Let's say that instead of creating a new list here, a new list each time, let's get the existing list from the server context. That way, if a list already exists, we will add to the list but, and will not replace it. Okay, and here we just let's cast the what it returns to array list passenger. Okay, good. Now we got the list. Still a problem. Well, what does it say here? Array list. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, still a problem. No. What if this was this was a brand new the first time the list is empty? In other words, the list was the attribute passengers was not yet set on the server context. This is the first time the form is being submitted, and the passenger's attribute was not yet set on the server context. We were going to get null here. This will be null. How do we ensure that we will get at least an empty list? Okay, here is where listeners come into play. Let's right click, click new, other, let's search for listener, click listener, next, and let's call it, let's call it, um, uh, airline listener for lack of a better word next and here let's we want to listen for when the application starts the listener here is a life cycle listener of the server context events this listener will listen to when the to when our application starts when our application starts, the servlet context will be created and this listener will pick up, will listen to the creation of the servlet context when our application first starts. Let's click next, finish. We will see that in detail. You see, this is a listener. It's a regular class, but it implements it a subclass it inherits server context listener and it has a web listener annotation this is the key this is what makes the listener this annotation <laughs> now you see it has two methods context initialize and context destroy context initialized is when our servlet context is first being created 
that is when our application is first deployed. Uh -huh. So here I'm going to let, let's call this event. This is clearer. Let's call this event. And here I can I want to initialize our list. How we can do that? Okay, so we will serve that context sc we will ask the event for the server context the event the con the server context has been initialized and the event can give us the server context let's import what we need jvac from let's import the jvac server package okay now <laughs> here I'm going to create the array list. Passenger P list array list passenger and sorry now I'm actually going to see if this attribute already exists. If the passenger's attribute already exists somehow. Probably this check is redundant, but it doesn't hurt. And to, if the list is null, and truth is, it's it's going to be null. And the reason it's going to be null is because this method will run when our application is only being deployed and our servlets are only being started. So there is no way that this list already exists. But if the list is null, I'm going to say system out uh, print lane no passenger list created yet. Let's create the list here. And then I'm going to actually create this new list. And, and then when I have the list, I'm going to set it as on the server context, I'm going to set it as our attribute. Uh, sorry, uh, set attribute passengers, passengers, and I'm going to set the P list. Now, this is okay this is good now <coughs> we have the list set on the server context passengers attribute okay now in add passenger so now everything now comes together we have the list it's set it is set on the server context passengers attribute and on the server context passengers attribute and in our add passenger servlet, we are going to get the list. If it already has passengers, great. If it's but if the application is just started, we're going to at least get an empty list. Because when the application is started, it adds to the passenger's attribute an empty list. We add our new passenger, and then we update the passenger attribute with the new list and we redirect. All right. In the next tutorial, we will see that this code works, but it's not entirely thread safe. And in the next tutorial, we will understand what this means and we'll add thread safety to this code. But in the meantime, thank you very much and uh, we'll continue next time.